Hey, what is up YouTube? I'm back again with another video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the uh, Miltech M1928 Haversack. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So here it is. This is a reproduction of the M1928 uh, Haversack. One that the U.S. used from before World War One, or at least the the style like it. There's one before it that looked very close, with a uh, couple differences, like this being a button closure versus a strap. Um, and that one had a different nomenclature, but the overall concept was around um, and just before World War One, and uh, used all the way up until the M1945. Uh, field pack came out so this is a reproduction like I said um, comes with the meat can pouch you have your dividers it holds a mess kit really well however I found with this one that I was not able to actually hold the the silverware in the silverware pockets so what I had to do was um, I had a put a rubber band around my silverware and stick it inside the meat can or mess kit uh, so it wouldn't make sound. Got a standard US on the front. Do you have your e-tool hanger and your bayonet hanger as well as the bayonet loop. Unfortunately these are actually so close together to each other that they don't actually hold US M1910 hangers. So you cannot use original bayonet or e-tool uh, carrier, which is kind of janky, but whatever. Main, or main closure flap does have the single buckle, and here's the single closure strap. Operates just like the originals So basically this strap gets weaved in between these loops and then buckled here You can see this one is done up so you just pull it out and then you pull it out of the loop on the compartment here you Flip this over and fold this down and you have opened the entire haversack and you can see the Miltech uh, tag it's nice and hidden it's not like it's just hanging off the meat can pouch or something I've had this thing for oh I don't know uh, probably going on three or four years now um, I did a trade with some guy who traded me the haversack the M36 pistol belt, OD3, uh, M43 suspenders, a cheap brown leather holster, and I think a canteen set. Um, if I remember right, everything except the canteen set was reproduction. Uh, but... I, I you got a, a trade or I traded them a whole bunch of, or uh, a set of used good condition uh, M56 gear. Um, I don't I don't think it was a complete set, but pretty close. And this was back when I really didn't do World War II gear, um, and I don't think that guy did either. It seemed like he had just bought this stuff just to buy it. I don't know. It didn't seem like whatever he had, it didn't seem like a complete or an accurate kit. Uh, but this is one of the pieces in the trade. Um, it's really awkward. Just the oddball in my collection. Just because I don't have any other World War II items except... Oh, he also traded me a cheap repro bayonet too. Um... But, uh, yeah, so I actually sold this thing, so that's why I'm doing the review. But the stitching isn't bad. The It's nice that it comes with the fake stamps. Um, 
I've measured my original one and these are to the original specification of the straps. I believe this whole strap is 25 inches. This one is 15 inches and this one is I think 9 inches. But they're they're the same size as the originals. Basically how you're supposed to do this um, these back two go to the back of your pistol belt or M1 Grand cartridge belt. This one goes to the front of your cartridge belt or pistol belt and then this one here goes inside here, this buttonhole, and then clips to this D-ring, one on each side, kind of like backpack straps. That's the way that it should be done by the book. However, most GIs, they would, they would clip this one to the D-ring, they would clip this one to the front of their belt, except they would either remove or just not even use these ones. Um, basically, if you got into a heavy firefight and you wanted to d ditch your pack so you could just have your ammo for more mobility, all you had to do was just unclip the front two and you're all set. Kind of a smart idea. But it was cool that they integrated this. Not a whole lot to say about it. Obviously you can see that the meat can pouch is removable. Um, same size as the original. The color isn't too bad. Um, as far as I know they don't make the bottom portion to this. Or the, what do they call it? Um, like the bedroll carrier, which is like an awkward trapezoid shaped fabric with a leather strap that would loop in between this. But I just looked online, it looks on Am like on Amazon, these are $79. I definitely wouldn't pay 80 bucks for this thing. This is definitely above one of those like $20 cheap Chinese ones, but not much. I could see 35 maybe $40 being generous. Um, but So yeah guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'm going to do a comparison in a separate video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you're looking into, I guess, just doing airsoft, then I think this would be good for you so you don't have to tear up an original or pay the price of an original. Um, the quality is really good. I mean, the stitching is great. The buckles don't feel too cheap. Um, the color, eh, but you can age this. But like I said, if you're looking for airsoft, like, go ahead, get one of these. Like, they're not that bad. But for actual reenacting, probably going to want to stick with an original or maybe something from at the front. Um, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something new. And as always, have a nice day.